Hey. Didn't spill any? All right, pop your top. Nice, I'll pop. Let's do it. Give me yours first. Thank you. Well, if I don't like it, easy there, Okay, yeah, What, sorry. you know? Let's slow, let's, let's, slow down. Are we going to drink it at the same time? We can. We'll cheers. Okay. Yeah. This is $500 worth of Yeti mugs right here. We're using. <laughs> Six. What a, what, a time, were, yeah. what a time to be alive, huh? How do we deal with the messiness of life? How do we find purpose? We try to answer that by talking to the risk takers, the big thinkers, and the ones who love breaking the mold. And when we're feeling playful, we hide cash in unexpected spots around the US, around the world maybe, just to see who's up for a little adventure. Today's guest is Rich Benoit of Rich Rebuilds. He's back, round two. The fire got bigger and the conversation went deeper. And if you're a subscriber to Rich's channel, well, you've never seen him like this, ever. He's different, this is new. If you're not a subscriber, go subscribe. He's got 1.5 million other YouTube subscribers because he's a master of mashing together Teslas, Arkimotos, Hondas, and anything that can fit a battery and an electric motor. I'm Jay Mays, and this is Seared, the Pursuit of Purpose. Cheers. All right, cheers. Thanks for coming, Rich. Of course. Big fire means deeper conversation. Yes, I see that. This uh, is, um. so I'm gonna give my review. Yeah, what do you think? Mm. I taste a little bit of leather. <laughs> Corinthian? Bit of leather. Like yeah, rich cor Corinthian cor leather. Rich Corinthian leather. Um, it tastes, uh, let me try to think. Mm. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of sand. Terroir. But it's very good. You like it? Uh, yeah, there's a little flavor in there. I think that flavor is mm, grape. A little bit of grape. A tinge. Oh, a tinge of grape, a hint, a smidge, if you will. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I give it a nine out of ten. Really? Yeah, it was very good. Good. I'm glad. You mentioned, I think the phrase was, "You don't let family stop you." Yeah. Uh, probably a controversial phrase, a Absolutely. little bit for some people. Absolutely. It's like the phrase we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your significant other being the most beautiful in the world. Is she? Yeah, why not? So. Using that phrase was obviously by intent. It's obviously something you, you mm -hmm. believe, but you didn't let your family stop you. No. Describe that to viewers because I, I won't do it justice. Oh, goodness. So, at a, uh, when my mother was younger, she's always wanted a Corvette. Mm -hmm. Always wanted a Corvette. And, you know, she saved the money to buy one. She wanted to pay for it cash. She's going to walk me to the dealership and get it. And I think she was set to purchase the car in a few days. And she went, she was started to feel very sick, went to the doctors. And they were like, you're sick because you're pregnant. And it was pregnant with me. That was you? So, you know, the car didn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. So she's like, you know, I can't have this car. You know, da -da -da. I have a you know, larger family now. It's going to make you know, less sense to get this. She never actually got it. So... I made it a point in my life to say, you know what? I really want a Corvette. Come on, I never had one. It's like a sense. It's it's like almost buying hers, the sure. one that she did, she never had. Yeah. And when I did that, when I told my friends I was planning on getting one, they're like, "Are you crazy? Like you have you have like you know a kid. You have another kid on the way. Like you have like you you need something that has like you know four doors and like a back seat. Like you you can't do this." I I did do it. So I ended up buying the Corvette, and the reason why I did it, even though it sounds selfish, which I, I'd argue it probably was, I didn't want to have any resentment at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have any regrets, mm -hmm. because a lot of people are from the ideology that once you have kids, like, your life is over. Sure. Like, I can't do this because I have this. Right. And that harbors resentment. Yeah. All the time. It's the like, builds. well, you know, it's like, well, I have, I buy a minivan now because I have all these kids. So, like, they're no longer their former self. Right. The things they used to enjoy, sit by, you know, what a fire, drink champagne, drink whiskey. Right. You know, smoke cigars. They say to themselves, they've lost that part of themselves because they decided to, you know, to have kids. Or you have couples that lose their way. Couples that say to themselves, oh, well, we used to do this. We used to go on date nights, mm. but we don't anymore because we have kids. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to you after 10 years of not knowing yourself anymore? Yeah. What does that do with 10 years of not, you know, taking your significant other on dates because you have something? 
it destroys it. Yeah, knocks so, you down every single time. It knocks you down. So it's it slowly erodes away at the fiber of relationship. And the same thing happens to us. You know, you have your sense of purpose. Everyone enjoys doing certain things. You know, you might like building little tiny ships and putting them in bottles. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your sense of purpose. That's what you love. Mm -hmm. When you stop doing that because you chose to do something else, you lose that part of yourself. Yeah. You know, so you, because you do that, you might start to show resentment. You forget who you are. Yeah. And then when the kids are gone, who are you? Yeah. I think if we look at that as identity, mm -hmm. right? Like maintaining your identity over time mm -hmm. and adjusting to outside influence, sure, but not letting outside influence control you. Right. I think probably as a person who knows who they are, mm -hmm. Uh, you can affect and interact with your positive, your family more positively. Absolutely. Uh, this bottle of wine got to me earlier than I thought it would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you start crying. Oh, so, yeah. Mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> so to me, if you're not only true to yourself, you mm -hmm. do to not have, holding that resentment, you can also be more true to your family in that case. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So now it's, that's how... Yeah, we bond now. Yeah. Like it's like, oh my gosh, like dad loves cars. You got another car. Yeah. Let's have a good time. Let's bond with him with it. And it's still who I am. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've always been a car enthusiast. Love him since day one. The, the best thing you can do is continue to be the same person that, you, that you've been. If that's who you are, be that person. When it's time to change, you'll know. True to who you are. Mm -hmm. Bring your family along with you. Absolutely. Have them experience you as you are. Absolutely. And probably offer that same thing to them. Yeah, absolutely. If, you know, the lesson to them would be, you don't have to sacrifice who you are for me either. Right. But I will participate in who you are. Mm -hmm. And that'll be part of the fun. 100%. You reminded me of, of your call back to your aunts later in the book. Mm -hmm. You mentioned mechanics that throw things. Mm -hmm. You said when you, uh, when something frustrates you, your inclination is not to pick up a wrench and hock it across the wall. wall. Right. Yeah. And, and I think you called back to your aunts and aunts, your... Of course, yeah. yeah. Because they taught me self-control. You know, when, when things get frustrating and yeah. you're mad, you don't just throw stuff. Yeah. You know, when I was, you know, I'd, I'd live with... I remember I had a roommate when he would get frustrated, he would throw things all the time. Mm. And like, I, I would learn from that and say, but that's not really what I want to do. Mm. I would, you know read the room and say this is how others are reacting to this this isn't positive this isn't what you do and i think back to my aunts and say you know they always uh, uh exercise control self-control mm -hmm. self-awareness i learned from them a lot a lot of senses mm. the when i do get frustrated i, I do want to say one thing yeah it, it's being grounded and reminding yourself of where you came from is the most important thing you can do. Like the path you took to get to that moment? The path you took to get to that moment and just stopping to kind of look around and just taking things in. Like zooming out is probably one of the best things that I've done. So zooming out is taking a bird's eye view of everything going on around you. Mm -hmm. And my example of that is one morning I woke up and I I, I, I had this weird dream the night before, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a dream that I met my younger self. And I knew it was a dream. You ever have those dreams where you know yeah. you're dreaming and you're like, I could kind of control this, but not really. A little lucid. Kind of lucid dream. I had to explain to my younger self as quickly as humanly possible what the future's like. Because he was asking me like, hey, what are things like when we get wow. older? Right. It was a bizarre dream, right? You felt time pressure to do that. Like, I, I felt only have pressure. a minute. Minute. I got to tell you, this is what the future is yeah. like. Don't marry that girl. <laughs> um, so I did that. And he's like, what's it like? I was just like, you're going to have bills. You're going to have taxes. You're going to have excise tax. I, like, unloaded on this kid. They're going to have taxes. You're right. going to pay excise tax, sales tax, this and this. It's going to suck. Da, da, da. So I started going on and on, scaring the absolute crap out of him. Right. And he said, okay. Well, what's it? What's a day like? Well, this is what a day is like. I go. Let me tell you how my day was this morning. I woke up. You know, I uh, the the mailman came. I opened the mailbox. It was a letter from my insurance company saying that they're no longer covering this medication that I'm on. Mm. And then and then I went into the house 
and the stupid dog peed everywhere and I had to find this and my younger self said, stop. We have a dog? Oh. I'm like, yeah, we have, a, we have a dog. Yeah, his name's Biscuit. He's a little turd. Da, da, da. I'm going on and on and on. Then I get outside and my, I have a, a flat tire. He's like, wait, we have a car? I'm like, we do have a car. And then, then I get inside and da, 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 da. I find my other keys. Like, we have two cars? Slowly, I started to realize the things that I wanted as a child, right. I have everything now. So like the fact that he was so amazed of like all that we've accomplished, yeah. I couldn't even tell him. Wait till he finds out we have a, a, a massive social media following right. and we're gonna be flying. I, I couldn't even tell him that. Right. So the embarrassing part is when <clears throat> I find myself complaining about the little things in life. Like, okay, this really sucks, this really sucks. I can't believe I have to pay this stupid thing, this mortgage, you have a house? Mm. Oh, the, the, my car blew a tire. You have, you have car, you have food to eat. You have a fridge full of stuff. Then he he asked, like, "Well, are mom and dad still there?" I said, "Yeah, they're they're still there. They're fine." Do we have friends? Yeah, we have friends. So the things that were important when I was a kid, I have that now. Yeah. So it was embarrassing for me to complain about those things when I have everything. So the the main point of that is. Basically, there is an inner child in all of us that can't wait to meet the adults we're going to become. Mm -hmm. It's like, think of all those things as a kid. Like, you're a kid and you want this. I want this so much. It's so important to me. And, like, you you have it. You, little do you know, you have it now. Yeah. You know, even even if you grew up in, like, a, a poor or abusive environment, like, you're, you're, you're past a lot of that. Yeah. So that, that was huge for me to realize. In a dream, with some reflection, would your inner kid be impressed with who you are now? Oh my gosh, they wouldn't believe. I, I knew that, so I didn't tell them everything. Yeah. I, I said, there's, I said, there's no. This it started to get embarrassing. The second he asked about the dog, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And he's yeah. like, wait, we have a car because back then, sure. It, it, my mom had a geo, a geo prism. Right which was like a budget Toyota Corolla, if you could imagine one. It was an American Corolla. And there's nothing I wanted more than that car. Hmm. Thinking about it now, it's yeah. like, are you, are you kidding me? This, right. this isn't even fair. I couldn't, I couldn't even, the, the things that are bad in my life now, I couldn't even explain to someone. The fact that your inner kid can feel that, um, it, it's like a sense of excitement for the things that come. I think a lot of times, we like at our age as adults we're not necessarily excited for like what we haven't experienced yet it's, it's more anxiety provoking mm -hmm. yet kids are usually like whoa where are we going whoa, like, like oh amazing. i've never been there before yeah, yeah exactly so you have to you have to continue that childlike enthusiasm a lot of the times you have to continue to do things that get and keep you excited Mm. This is why we have hobbies. Yeah. They're things to do that aren't the day to day. They aren't the mundane, oh, I gotta go to work, I gotta churn butter, or do whatever you do. Right. You have to keep doing, keep hiking, keep exploring, keep, you know, wh whatever people do. I think a lot of our audience is butter churners. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Like, wait, <laughs> I don't have to do this anymore? And I just throw the thing up in the air. <laughs> I don't have to churn butter? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Now, today, mm -hmm. with Rich Rebuilds, mm -hmm. uh, you've moved beyond uh, just doing re rebuilds. You've experimented with, experimented with other content types. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, are you going to continue to experiment and evolve? And is the channel going to continue to... Yes. So I realized very quickly that uh, in terms of me being a mechanic, I'm not the best in the world. There's people around. There's, You're within, not the most beautiful mechanic in the I'm world? I'm not the most beautiful. I'm not the prettiest mechanic in the world, which was hard to hear. Yeah. So within a one mile radius of here, there's a hundred mechanics that'll run circles around me. So I have to have another skill set mm -hmm. that will keep a competitive edge on everyone else. And if it's not mechanics, it's going to have to be presentation and humor. Mm most likely because yeah. every everyone's doing uh, listen i'm a mechanic i did it this way yeah but why would i want to continue to watch this because there's another there's other mechanics that do the same thing yeah you know why aren't i entertained by this yeah so that happened a, uh, a couple times where a lot of people will approach me and say 
you know, I don't really care for car content. Sure. But I enjoy watching your videos. Who you are. Yeah, because it's because they're funny. Right. Like I, I don't really care about cars, but I don't follow it. I just get in, turn it on, and drive. But yeah. like this is what you're saying is funny to me, so I'm gonna keep watching. So have I think you, that's kind of cool. Have you thought about churning butter? I every day. <laughs> like this entire conversation, I was like, I wish I could churn <laughs> butter right now. <laughs> yeah, rich churns. Just right? churns. I like it. Yeah. I think your channel to me. Uh, has never been like a 101 how to do this. No. Uh, it's always been a how I did this and maybe how you can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the car content now is 101, like mm -hmm. replace this, you know, replace this, replace that, yep. change this belt, etc. Mm -hmm. But you've never gravitated towards that type of content. No. You're, and you've always erred towards entertainment plus education. Absolutely. And I say erred towards because you appreciate error and failure and all the rest of it. Sometimes that. just uh, entertainment. Yeah. A lot of the times people will watch the videos and say, you know what, Rich, I spent 30 minutes watching that video. I didn't learn anything, mm -hmm. but it was good. Mm. You know, I'm just like, yes, awesome. 30 minutes of not retaining anything is perfect. Thank you. But I laughed. <laughs> but you laughed, right, exactly. You touched on nostalgia a little bit in your book. Yeah. Do you have a heavy nostalgia feeling? Yes. I love keeping mementos from either my childhood mm -hmm. or different experiences. Ooh. Like if I, like now that I've been here, yeah. the goal is to take all, a lot of your snacks. Oh, perfect. And I'm gonna write like the date and said, this is this is when I did this. Those are a little ephemeral. Probably. Yes, yeah, they have an expiration date. Yeah, we could, uh, you for, could take a $500 mug if you For want. sure, oh absolutely. You this have to already, sign the other one. This is already mine. <clears throat> so uh, I take little mementos from the trips that I take. Yeah. Pictures, a lot of the time people have like 60,000 photos in their phone. They won't go through them. No. It's like, who, who remembers that? I have an eight and a half month old, and I, I mean, we've taken tons of pictures of yeah. him. I go back only when I'm showing other people, pretty much. That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, literally only need like six photos from each year. Yeah. But that, that's really it. Yeah. So uh, I keep mementos, though. So, yeah. for example, if I go into the cabinet and like I pull out my mug, I'm like, right. I remember this. That's right. Where was this from? Mm. What show is this? And You'll hear the matter. water. Doesn't. Yes, <laughs> that's. <laughs> That's it. There's still champagne in it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Do you want to go back to that time? Is, does it feel like that? Or is it just like, I'd like to bathe in kind of whatever I'm remembering and then move on? I'd like to bathe in whatever I'm remembering because I've learned that nostalgia is also a bitch. Yeah. Because just because you remember, I, what show was it? I was watching a show and I was like, man, when I was a kid, that show was so funny. I think it was, was it Punky Brewster? Or was it, um, not Punky Brewster, it was... Small Wonder. Oh, the one with the robot girl? Uh, Vicky. Vicky. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Right? 100%. So. She, like, they had the picture of her, like, lifting the couch with one hand. Yeah. She vacuumed underneath. I, yeah. I was like, this show is awesome. This really dates us. Then I went back and I watched it. Yeah. I was like, what, what was I thinking? Yeah. Uh, even for cars, I've always wanted a, a, an old school square body Chevy. So, I wanted a square body, you know, 70s truck. Love the look of it. I went out and bought one. Yeah. I was like, man, this is going to be awesome. They dropped that car off, and I got in. I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this to be like, you know, yeah. like, like a jerk, but, yeah. you know, you, you get in. It might not start the first time. Yeah. When it finally starts, it shakes violently back and forth. Like, yeah. okay, that's fine. It's loud as heck. It's slow. Yeah. It's insanely heavy. There's no blue. There's no creature comforts. No AC. No this. No that. And I'm I'm driving it. It's drifting all over the road because it's like suspension from like a hundred years ago. Yeah. It's like riding like a like a rickshaw everywhere. I'm like, what am I? What am I doing? This was so cool when I was a kid. Right. But now that I'm in it now and I've had other experiences with other cars, it's like this is it's a hard sell. Yeah. It was a really hard sell. So eventually I ended up getting rid of it. Yeah. In your book, uh, you said that you have a hard time selling cars, especially if you name them. Yes. Once I name them, I feel like that's a, a connection that I have with it, you know? So I'll just, if I don't name something, it's just like, you might not last long. We'll see how things go. Okay. Uh, I've recently started to let go of that a little bit. Mm. I've been starting to sell some things. And I, a lot of the reasons why I don't get rid of things is because if I do sell them, someone else will have them, obviously. 
but that other person could make a video saying, hey, yeah. I bought one of Rich's cars and like, I, it just, it could turn to something else. Yeah, you, you're known now at this mm -hmm. point and your work, you know, is available for judgment if you mm -hmm. do sell. Of course, yeah. Uh, and, I mean, for the buyer, it could be not an enthusiast, it could be someone with the intent of sort of, you know, taking apart your work and, Absolutely. and pulling, Absolutely. pulling the strings. So I do it myself. So a lot of the yeah. things that I build, I just end up disassembling. Yeah. But also from a budget stamp perspective, I'll take them apart, reuse those parts in something else. Yeah, that's actually kind of beautiful. You kind of have like Rich's junkyard then. Literally, yeah. It just, re I mean, there's, there's, I could think of several projects. I said, you know what, this is a very expensive and nice battery and motor configuration. Yeah. I'm done with this vehicle. I'm gonna harness this stuff and continue to recycle yep. and, and make it into something else. As Rich has said, he films everything right from his iPhone. And you're probably watching this on a phone or a laptop too. Maybe your TV, maybe not. Which I hate to say, all of those devices are spying. Every one of them, right now, spying. It's unsettling. That's why our guest, next month, on the next episode, is Byron Tao who uncovered how and why your devices spy on you, who the perpetrators are, and what you can do about it. He was just on The Daily Show talking to Jordan Klepper, and yeah, phone, laptop, TV, all spying on you. Even the tire pressure monitors in your car spy. Rich's cars too. Back to Rich. Does what you've accomplished affect your family uh, in ways you didn't expect? Yeah, so, one of the funniest things is when we're out, when I'm out with the kids, people's reactions to seeing me out oh. is always is always funny. Yeah. The kids are like, oh, dad's getting noticed again. <laughs> are they, they embarrassed by it? They, they they think it's the funniest thing. They, they'll they'll act they'll haze me too. Oh, good. So one day we were at the airport, and then they I hate this, but they'll say, hey, is that Rich Rebills? And they'll, I'm like, don't. <laughs> There's nothing drives me crazy like like that because it brings more attention. Like, it is him, and then the people right, just start, yeah. yeah, amps up. Yeah, it, it amps up. But yeah, no, we, we have a good time with it. Uh, some people have a really hard time with boundaries. Sure. So I'll be at a restaurant. Yeah. And I'll you know when I when the kids were young I'd be feeding the kids and then be like hey it's you can I get a picture I'm like I'm kind of in the middle of something. Yeah. Um. But no, besides that, it's really. I really can't think of other ways uh, besides me having to travel and be on the road a lot right that that's a big thing yeah and um you know i mean even even for this trip i told him i was going to the grocery store yeah and I'm, I'm, so we did like, turn those flights around pretty fast we did yeah they, they so almost might believe that they believe that oh wow that was a, that was a quick grocery store yeah. trip that's only 24 hours not yeah. bad yeah it seems to me again viewers perspective uh, that your friends and your co-workers that appear in your videos, you have genuine connections with. Like, Absolutely. there's nothing contrived there. Like, they call you out on your bullshit. You call them out on their bullshit. Right. It seems to be a really positive working relationship. hundred percent. Is that, 100%. that's real life? That's real life. People always ask that, like, how real are those videos? And nothing is scripted. Mm. Like, the people that I have in the videos, they're... They wouldn't even know how, if I tell them to do something. They'd be yeah. like, uh, they, they wouldn't. <laughs> this is. They, you know, if you, but it, that is that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Like, someone's like, hey, stand here. Yeah. Do this. Hands in the pocket. Like you know, even when I was getting like my photos taken, I yeah. felt like I felt like an idiot. I'm just like, am I doing this right? Am that's, I am I squatting why we did right? Throw you off. Yeah. Am I squatting? <laughs> like, am I, am I smiling? Smile with no teeth. Yeah. Just so. Um, they wouldn't even know how to do that. Okay. So everything is just, I take the phone out, I'm like, let's get to it, and we just start talking. We obviously do it a little bit differently than you do, but the essence, I think, for me has been really important. Like, mm -hmm. we're not gonna ask people to repeat answers to questions. Yeah. We're not going to lead, uh, give them questions to answer ahead of time. We're not mm -hmm. going to prep them. Even better. Uh, we want them to be them. their their genuine selves uh, when we sit down and do this. And that's another reason uh, we do this at a bonfire. It's it's super authentic. This is this is we hope we this hope is a so. conversation between between friends. Yeah, it should be. Absolutely. I think for me to have you here, first of all, is a joy. Thank you. Um, but to have to know that your show 
is also not contrived. Uh, obviously, your personality. I mean, we'll, we'll do we'll time. do some, we'll do some skits. Sure, but that's a little different. That's, yeah. But you're not claiming that's real. Right. No. Um, Absolutely not. We'll do some skits. Like obviously, I didn't really kill that guy. You right. know what I mean? Oh, come on. But that's different than hey, we want this to feel this way for these people, and we want to no. hit these audiences. No. And that sort I of think I I like to remain as just remain genuine. Like there's mm-hmm. really no purpose in having to manufacture things. When you find yourself manufacturing things, you'll you'll soon realize that you know maybe this really isn't the content yeah. for me. It's hard to keep that up. Well, I think as soon as you're manufacturing content, it loses how special it could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to you have to build the special, whatever it is, into the concept. Right. So it's a lot of forethought. It's a lot of work ahead of time. Um, it's more work than just doing fun stuff that you're passionate about mm-hmm. and putting that out in the world and seeing how people react. Right. Going back to where we started, the, the, you know, um, the, the kids that you spoke to in the classroom, mm-hmm. um, you had said you hung up from that Zoom call. That tells my age. Hang yeah. up the phone, right? <laughs> the brewery. Right. Yeah, when, when, you, when you made the call, how did you... <laughs> so after you closed the Zoom call, we'll yeah. say you hit the X in the corner. Yeah. Uh, you said that was a pretty emotional moment. Very much for you. so. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Uh, it was emotional because... The kids like looked up to me. I'm like, "What are you guys doing? Don't I'm don't do that." But it also reminded me of myself. It is encouraging to hear what the like, youthful, like beautiful people want out of life. Right. Like seeing the world through their eyes, it's amazing. Yeah, you know, it's just like wait till you guys have to pay taxes. You're gonna hate life. <laughs> but like, but but but, see, but seeing their innocence is right. it's like oh, it's. I can't think of anything that's more inspiring. Did it give you a different energy after leaving that call in terms of what you want to do with your time in, you know, on earth, right? Mm-hmm. Like in the world, yeah. how you want to affect people? There's no doubt in my mind that, I mean, kids are, that's the literal future. Yeah. You know, like everything we're doing right now, like that's great, but, you know, we don't have as much time on this earth as they do. Yeah. That we've shifted to different things. Once we settled in our career, yep. um, we don't really learn as much as we used to. We're not part of large forms of education. Mm-hmm. You know, we're experiencing life. We're kind of like in our in our, our twilight stage, right? Like just mm-hmm. cruising, maintain speed. Mm-hmm. Whereas they're aggressively coming up. They're as learning as much as they can. Yeah, and they want to change the world. They're like, man, I could change this. Mm. Like, I, I I could do this. My oldest. She's the same way. She's great. You know, she wants to, you know, help people, medical field. She goes to, you know, pharmacy school. She's like, I want to help people. Yeah. And I don't really see that light in a lot of people's older years Mm. because they think they can't do it. Mm. It's going to be a little bit more challenging for you, but yeah. But seeing their enthusiasm is is everything. Hmm. To me, the only irony in that statement that people you know as they age can impact the world less is we can impact those kids and mm-hmm. i think that's what you've you've done uh at least you know by your own account absolutely yeah uh, and you'd like to do more of and that to me that to me was the magic of it honestly yeah uh is that you walked away from that saying this was emotional and it told it was, me something about myself it was cool yeah yeah it showed me that i think i think kids are they're pretty. They're pretty cool. I think. Yeah. For the most, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. The things that I've gone through have done wonders for my overall character development. Like everything. Yeah. It's it's awesome for character development. You wanna you wanna you wanna really be a tough cookie, you know, uh, marry your high school girlfriend and have a kid when you're like 19, 18 years old. Talking like, about do that. Talking you know? about being a teenage father. Yeah. Uh, and and talking about the way you did in the context of. Um, judgment that you that you would get from outside, mm-hmm. uh, judgment and expectation. I would say are the two of course. Kind of, uh, approaches to that, mm-hmm. and then turning that around and saying, as I achieved more, I went back and kind of backfilled some of the experiences I could have had during that yeah, time. Of course, with cars mm-hmm. and, and the watch, etc. Yeah. Um, to me, that was a powerful way to say uh, my situation didn't define me. Nope. And. That seems to it be the case. It didn't dictate the outcome. Yeah, it didn't dictate the outcome. No, exactly. absolutely not. So that was uh, that was a big thing of mine. I wanted to make sure that, 
beating the odds is tough. You know, it's yeah. it's this you you're you're put in a hole because the second you hear, oh, you know, pregnant high school call, it's just like oh, mm. here we go. Judge a list of judgment. Oh, a list of judgment, and yeah. even to this day, like you know, I I caught myself like doing the same thing. You know, I told my daughter, I was just like, you better not do that. <laughs> like, are you crazy? And then she's yeah. like, well, I'd be just like you. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> how dare you? Yeah. I am a 60-year-old influencer. Yeah, I'm 60. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was very telling. I, again, yeah. it, I get caught up in the, in the, in the day-to-day, and it's just like, I, you, for a second, I forgot, you know, where I came from. Yeah. Your ability to look back at and be nostalgic mm-hmm. without, uh, w- without sort of living in it, mm-hmm. uh, that conversation you had in a dream with your inner child that ultimately gave you a lot of perspective, uh, your willingness to talk to kids who need someone like you and push them forward, and even talk to kids who may not think they need someone like you, but ultimately right. do, I think that defend, defines you more than your YouTube channel does. Yes, uh, big time. And I think, to me, that's why I will always watch your channel. Thank you. Uh, more because of who you are and not Sherp, although that's pretty badass. Right? Well, that, I think things like this are important, this, this fireside chat we're having, because people don't really get to see that side of me on the YouTube channel. Mm. It's just intro, jokes, 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 haha, poop joke, fart joke, that's funny. Video's over. Mm. Would you learn nothing? Awesome. Mission accomplished. And that's it. Mm. But this is important because you get to, this in the book, you get to see a different perspective on, you know, the inner workings of, you know, how I construct things and how I build uh, the brand and also uh, uh, insight into myself too. Yeah. It's cool. Thank you so much for doing this. No, of course. Uh, Yeah. This this is going to be our return to YouTube. It's going to be, we call it Mark Mm Five, kind of an Iron Man thing. Yeah, I like it. Really appreciate your time, Mm -hmm. uh, the conversation. Thank you. Uh, who you are. Thank you very much. And I'm glad we could do this in a pretty comfortable situation. This is awesome. Uh, th- number one, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, bringing all these wonderful people. They're pretty to, cool. Together. This is like, this is I'm like, your, these, these are the Avengers here. That's right. This I'm is lucky awesome. to have this group. Yeah. So, and um, again, this is beautiful setting. You put a lot of work and thought into this, but uh, thank you for everything. Yeah. Thank I you very appreciate much. it. Of course. Anytime. All right. That's where I'm It's going to yeah. start to rain. I know. It's raining. All right. What, what can I help do? The pressures from being having 1.5 million subscribers aside, mm-hmm. you still do you still do what you love every single day? Sometimes I get annoyed. Okay. Sometimes I'll scream, and then I ground myself by saying, "I literally have the best job in the world." <laughs>